King. Um, my voice sounds a little weird because uh, I've been coughing a lot. If I start coughing, sorry to do that in your ear, uh, but I can't help it. Uh, okay, so the goal today is I want to just do like a brief rundown of generals, right? So this isn't going to be anything specific about building generals. Uh, it's basically just going to be... Um, I don't know, how do you figure out what to do with your generals? Um, so, like, they actually help you a lot here, right? You can break it down. Um, and, like, military generals, these are, will either be wall generals, right? And you can tell this is a wall general because right here it says in-city ground troops, right? In-city means it only works when they are um, troops in the city, right? And when he's the main city defense general. Cool. Um, this guy, uh, increases range troops attack. Um, so he's a range general. Um, sometimes they'll have extra modifiers on here. I'll point that out in a second. Uh, but he, this guy, he actually just says the attack of range troops, uh, uh, that are wed by the general right there. Right. So that actually works anywhere. I could put him on the wall if I wanted to. I wouldn't, but I could. It would work. Uh, Roland. He's a mounted general. Mounted troops attack by 30%, and mounted troops defense and HP by 15. Cool, that's really good. Um, but he only works when you're leading the army to attack. Um, so, like, I couldn't put him on my wall. Uh, uh, this this wouldn't just, it just wouldn't activate if I was on my wall. Uh, Martinez, also a mounted general. Uh, Guan Yu, he's a ground troop. General. Um, it increases ground troops and mounted troops HP. Okay. Um, I can go down. Oda is a defense general. Um, he increases range troops attack um, and siege machines attack. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there's generals that have two different things on them. Usually there's one better gen one better um, stat. In this case, I think it's easy to see. It's the um, range troops attack. Uh, but sometimes uh, what you got to do is you got to go to here to your specs and see, okay, he is range. This is range and siege. And this is uh, range and siege. So I think this one here would be the one that says, hey, this makes this is mostly range, but actually does a lot for siege as well. Right, and the last one here, this is all going to be ranged. Um, cool, and I mean, like, we could go through a little bit more. Um, it's not really a military general, but makes you go faster. Uh, he's a siege machine general, I think, if you look at the uh, specs. All right, we can go over here. Uh, siege, uh, range and siege, uh, siege, siege. Cool, right, so this is how you can figure out what they're for. Um, development, fall into two categories, either you're, they're your uh, double drop generals, right, 25% uh, double drop, um, or like reducing stamina cost. These are for joining rallies. Um, and your gathering generals, right, stuff like Gaius Marius, uh, or gathering speed, or uh, Princess Lucy, uh, resource gathering speed. Um, duty, uh, you probably know about these, but these are people that are specifically meant to be duty officers inside of, like, let's just get over here. Uh, like here, for example, I can put a duty officer inside my market. There's not one for the market specifically, but I could go put him here, and it's going to give me, uh, more resource tax amount. I'm going to take him off because I use him. Okay, um, right, and this guy is um, the barracks officer. And that guy is the archer tower officer. Right, so there's certain ones from certain places. We can talk about duty generals later if we want. Subsidy generals um, have debuffs. Reduces enemy troops' attack by 10%. Oh, come on. Uh, reduces enemy range troops' attack by 30%. Um... Reduces enemy ground troops and mounted troops HP by 10%, and other stuff, right? 
we put these on subsidies so that when you get attacked or attack with your subsidies, the debuffs uh, apply, right? So like I have all these subsidies here. When I attack somebody, uh, it gives me the option to send those subsidies right here, right? Um, and those debuffs get applied. Um, so that's what we like putting debuff channels on there. Um, Cool. And like, you know, once we figure out that, oh, I have this guy who's a ranged, I know I want to put range gear on and I want to use him to lead my range march. I need, uh, I guess two, but one that actually needs to like have resources put into them. Uh, but I'm going to have one main general. Let's say I want him to be my main general, but I'm going to get him gear that gives my ranged troops buffs. We'll ignore that. Um, range HP, ranged attack, ranged attack, ranged attack and defense. This doesn't have any because I just didn't have a good option for what to put there. Um, so I went for the debuffs. Um, I hope that helped. Uh, I'm sure there's more questions you have. Um, that was a very like broad um, explanation of maybe how you should like kind of look at your generals and decide what you want to do with who. Uh, but if we're starting with trying to figure out how to um, like how to set up a march for mounted as I think what we were initially talking about here. Um, start with picking a ground a mounted general. We'll help you with that in a second, but then we gotta find some gear from, right? Um, give him a spear because that increases um, uh, a bunch of mounted stuff, HP and attack. These boots, mounted defense and attack. Uh, mounted defense on monsters. Uh, mounted troop defense, right? All this stuff does a lot of stuff for mounted troops, so I'm putting on my mounted general. Um, and all your generals should be specialized for that one troop type. The ground one, ground attack, uh, ground defense, ground defense. My ground general still has dragon gear because I um, have been feeding my dragons a lot. Um, yeah, I hope that helped. Uh, let me know if there's any questions. Uh, and yeah.